Today we're going to replace the steering stem bearing in your Yamaha R1. This is actually a fairly easy uh, thing to do. Um, it's just time consuming getting to the steering stem itself. So I've already pulled all the plastic off the motorcycle. Um, the front wheels off obviously I have other videos if you want to see how to remove your front wheel and put your front wheel back on um, I'm at the point now where I need to replay or re need to pull off the front fender the front fender on the Yamaha R1 is actually pretty easy there's only six screws holding it on on this bike five screws because it was missing one So once the screws are out, you just lift up your fender and then pull it through. Now we're going to remove the bracket that holds your horn and your uh, brake calipers onto the lower triple tree. The uh, piece for the horn uh, um, is going to mount uh, directly to the plastic piece and um, I'm not going to hook up the brake lines. If I'm this far into an R1, um, we are not putting this R1 back together with these DOT uh, lines that come stock on the R1. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put uh, Galfer braided brake lines. So these are just 10 millimeter bolts. And once we get them off, we can just throw the uh, brake road or the brake calipers um, off to the side. So you see it's just like a little plastic shroud. Push that off to the side. And then we have this piece with our horn attached to it. And now I need to get the bike up in the air. So the best way I've found to get bikes in the air is using a motorcycle tie down. And I'm just pulling it through the air box. And then hooking it together. And then I have a, a hook on my loft that I put another motorcycle tie down. Um, with the ratchet strap all I need to do is hold the bike up I don't really need to lift it up any I've already got it on the pit bull stand So there's my ratchet strap. I'm just going to put it through my eyelet overhead and uh, pull everything up. Just pull it tight. And as you see, just a couple clicks with the ratchet strap gets the bike up enough that I can pull the pit bull stand out. I put a couple microfiber towels up against the tank just in case that strap hits the tank. 
I don't mess the paint up any. So the bike's free and hanging now. And then any excess strap, just get it up out of the way. So these little caps are just decorative and all I did was took a small screwdriver and pried those up. Definitely get the smallest screwdriver or utensil you can find. Don't use a ginormous screwdriver and scratch things up and break stuff. Um, you're going to want to have those covers back on the uh, triple tree when you get it done. So. <clears throat> The little caps that I had pulled off, um, those two bolts would be the first two bolts that you pull out. And then you need to do the clip on, and then you need to do the upper triple tree bolt. Once the clip on is loose, you can pull the clip on out of the way. And make sure that you leave enough play on those bolts um, so that clamp doesn't try to grab the fork at all when you're pulling the fork out of the triple tree or out of the clamp. So right now the left fork tube is ready to slide down and out of the way. This would be a good time to replace the fork seals if your uh, bike is leaking fork oil. This bike was good, um, so I didn't need to do that. It probably needs new fork oil, but that's not going to be me. I'm not a big fan of uh, rebuilding forks. It's really messy, time-consuming. Um, so there goes the, the hex head bolt from the top of the triple tree which holds the uh, clip on, connects the clip on to the triple tree and then we just loosen the clip on and spin it out of the way that will allow us to get to the next bolt which is going to be the upper triple tree bolt. Now that these two are loose, we can jump to the front of the bike. And do the two on the lower triple tree. this fork out of the way now we can start working on the steering stem so this can be a 36 millimeter socket and here's a trick that'll keep you from scoring up your aluminum bolts so just take some motor oil um, you just want to get a thick motor oil gear oil would probably be even better but gear oil smells bad and um, wipe oil around your aluminum nut and then put your socket on it. So 
once that nut is free, it'll come right off. Um, so this nut is more decorative than anything. Um, it really doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, just lets you pull the um, triple tree down. So you see there's no real scuffage on that aluminum nut. So grab your nut, grab your washer, get them out of the way. And then you can take your upper triple tree off. So these two nuts that are under the triple tree, these are the two important ones. So the first thing I'm going to pull off is the retainer. And all it does is it locks the two nuts into the same position so they can't back off on each other. And then the top nut isn't really that tight. It's just there to lock the lower nut into place. Um, so that should just spin right off. Once we get that out of the way and the little rubber spacer, then we can start working on the next one. So this is a spanner wrench for those of you that have never seen one of these. And we just put that on the nut and spin it. And you see it wasn't torqued down to 8,000 pounds. Um, and then we're able to spin off the last nut. So before you get this nut down to the end of the threads, make sure you put your hand on the lower triple tree and push the steering stem up through the bike. Um, that way you're triple tree isn't falling out on the ground. So we get the nut out of the way, we get the dust cover out of the way, and there's our triple tree with our ball bearings. So these are the stock ball bearings. These bearings actually look great in this bike. Um, whoever had the bike before uh, probably did not do too many wheelies. Because I have seen those bearings just completely destroyed in the past. So now we just have a punch, a long punch, and um, we're just tapping on the bottom of the bearing race. There's two races, one at the top, one at the bottom. Both of them have to come out. So we're working on the one on the top right now. And if you just lightly tap, you need to do it at different angles and then you see it pops out and now we go from the top and you'll do that a few times before it actually pops out and then, there it goes it's out so our old races are out now we need to work on putting in our new races so the way I do this is I use a socket. So I take my race and I get a socket which is the same size as the race. Um, you do not want to be beating on the race with a hammer. So you always want to use something between the race and the hammer. Otherwise you can uh, chip the race, you can dent the race. Uh, if you beat up the inside of your bearing race, then your bearing is not going to work properly inside the motorcycle. It needs to be smooth. Um, so just be very careful when you're installing your bearing race. Do it the way I do. If you have like a hand press, that would be another good way, but this way works perfect. Um, you just go slow. Uh, and you know like I said find a socket that's the same size I have a, a huge toolbox full of tools um, so I have many sockets that can do this job I use craftsman sockets because um, they're cheap and uh, typically you can get them replaced and they're all standard size sockets and I don't typically use standard size um, nuts so 
It doesn't matter if I damage them. I don't care how damaged my craftsman tools are for the next owner. So now we need to cut the race off of the lower triple tree. cut through, you'll know when the race breaks. It's about to right now if you listen closely. That little click that you just heard was the bearing race snapping. Um, the bearing race is a very hard metal um, and it's pressed on and it's under a lot of tension. So as soon as that race comes free, um, as soon as it, it gets weak enough it'll just snap and come right off the uh, it uh, come loose from the steering stem so at this point um, our new bearings do not come with grease so this is how you pack grease into a bearing you don't just take the bearing and wipe grease all the way around the outside of the bearing because then how do you get grease inside the bearing the important part, the inside of the bearing. So easiest way is put a glob of grease in the palm of your hand and then take the bearing and if you look at the bearing top and bottom there's cracks between the outer bearing holder and um, the inner bearing race. So you just want to force grease into that crack and it'll get the grease inside between the rollers and the race so your your bearings um, will be well lubricated so this is the this is the lower steering stem bearing and you see that it's got the dust protector already mounted part of the bearing race which is kind of nice so I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit and get any excess off um, I do, I'm fortunate that I do have a press, so I'm able to press this bearing on. If you don't have a press, you can use, uh, for the R1, you would need a inch and a quarter piece of Schedule 40 PVC, and that'll slide down over your steering stem, um, and then you can hammer it on. You just need to make sure that your hammering on the bearing race and not on the bearing not on the outer part of the bearing don't go beating with the hammer on your bearing it's very bad again as you see me forcing the bearing across the palm of my hand you can start to see the grease come through the top of the bearing um, and this is the proper way to pack a bearing if you don't have a tool that does it for you back when I was younger I worked in a shop and we had a a tool but we did great big bearings on uh, huge trucks and uh, the bearing just dropped down in this tool and then we had a pump that would pump the grease into the tool and it would force the grease um, from the inside of the bearing to the outside of the bearing it made quick work of this job this is a messy job so once we've got the bearings packed, it's best change out your gloves, clean up a little bit. So here's the steering stem with the bearing off. Um, my other shop is, is in a different part of my house. That's where my bearing press is. So um, I went down there and I didn't take the camera and I pressed on the bearing. If you don't want to um, use Schedule 40 PVC to put your push your bearing on uh, you can take this to uh, most decent automotive shops or machine shops will have a press uh, it's very easy to press this bearing on so I put a little bit of extra grease on the lower bearing and I pushed it up through and now I'm going to take the upper bearing and this extra grease that I put on my finger, I'm going to put that on the bottom part of the bearing. Next comes our 
dust cover. This will keep the dirt and debris out. It doesn't do a real good job of keeping the water and moisture out, um, but this part of the bike rarely gets too much water up in it. So here's our first nut. We're tightening it down. Um, we'll get it snug to that dust cover, bearing seal or whatever you might want to call it. And we're going to take our spanner. And again, you remember when I took this off, it wasn't that tight. It might have only been maybe 20, 20 foot pounds. So you don't have to tighten it down that much. Uh, with the tapered roller bearings, you could tighten it down a whole lot if you wanted and it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. Um, the other nice thing about tapered roller bearings is if you don't have a steering dampener, you can always torque down your bearing retainer um, nut there and tighten up the steering and make it as tight as you wanted without destroying the bearings. There's no downside to using the tapered roller bearings. Tapered roller bearings will always be the better option over the ball bearings that the manufacturer puts in the bike. The difference is they're a little bit expensive, more expensive. Um, for this particular 2007-2008 R1, these bearings were um, $46 for the set. Um, for the 2006 and older, the bearings were $32 for the set. I didn't really notice the difference between the two sets, but uh, apparently there is a difference between 2006 and 2007 as far as these bearings go. So we've got the upper triple tree back on. We're going to put our nut back on. So this we're only going to do finger tight because we want to be able to align the upper triple tree with the lower triple tree once we get our forks in. So just get it on there tight, tight enough that it still moves, but it's, it's not like flexing or it doesn't have any gaps. So we're going to put our right fork tube in first. Make sure to line up all your all your cables in your hoses and your electrical everything. Make sure that all that junk is lined up now so you don't have to come back and do it later. Why is there always enough time to do it over, but there's never enough time to do it right the first time? So once you fight with this, it'll finally get into place. And if you pretty much want your uh, forks to be the stock setting, um, it's going to be flush on the upper triple tree. If you want your bike a little bit lower, to set a little bit lower, you can push those forks up um, into the triple tree and have it stick out the top a little bit um, but once you start lowering a bike you really uh, it, it, it doesn't allow the bike to handle the way the bike should personally I think R1's look stupid when they're lowered and they have a stretch swing arm but that's just me I like a bike that can perform through the twisties. Where I live there are no straight roads, so it doesn't make a there's no there's no point to 
lowering and stretching a motorcycle here. There's not enough straight lines for you to ride it, and then it rides like a semi going through the turns. So once you have your forks on, you need to align them. So the best way I've found to align them is put your axle in. Once you've got your axle into the forks, then you know um, where the forks really need to set in the bike. So it's bound up a little bit on one side. So if you loosen one of your um, clamp bolts, because I only have two of them cinched down right now. If you loosen one of them and the axle will be able to fall right into place, then you know you're pretty in pretty good alignment. So now I'm going to um, coat my triple tree nut with oil so I don't scratch it up. And I'm going to tighten it down now. I'm not going to torque it down. I'm just going to get it very tight. I'll torque it down once I'm done putting the whole bike together. So I get it tight. So it, it's very snug right now. And now I begin um, tightening down all of my um, clamp bolts that hold the forks into place. It's very important that when you tighten all these down, you do put a torque wrench on them. So I get my two upper triple tree bolts tightened down, and then I go ahead and I put a torque wrench on the end. So here's my torque wrench. This upper triple tree is aluminum. Um, you definitely don't want to over tighten these. If you strip out the threads, it will not be good for you. Unfortunately for you guys, um, if you're watching this video, I do not give out torque specifications. Uh, I don't know what your bike you're working on. This is a 2007-2008 model. The torque specs might be a little different for this model than they are for your model. Um, so do pick up your owner's manual and research it out for your particular bike. Nothing good can happen if you're using torque specs from a different, from a different bike, unless it's a Harley Davidson then torque specs don't really matter, do they? So these clamps, you want to do um, one bolt, and then the other 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 bolt, until both of them um, um, click on the torque wrench equally. What happens is you'll tighten down the top one, and it'll make the bottom one loose and then you'll tighten down the bottom one and it makes the top one loose so be sure to go back and torque down each one of these one at a time alright so now we're gonna put our clip-ons back into place So my little bolts that I pulled out of the top of the um, triple tree, I've dropped those in, and we're just going to line those up. I, I grabbed some of the excess oil from the triple tree and put it on these bolts just to make them screw in a little bit nicer. Also, it'll make sure that um, these bolts don't corrode in the future. Anytime you put a steel bolt with aluminum, it has the tendency to start corroding. So a little mobile one will help protect that. So as you can see, as I tighten that down, it brings the, the uh, clip-on into place where it should be. Now I'm going to jump over to the left side, and I'm going to pull the left side into place.
The nice thing about these bolts on the top of the triple tree is um, Yamaha has it set up to align both clip-ons equally so you don't have to get your alignment tool out and measure um, distance for your clip-ons. And we're going to tighten down tighten down the clamp bolt that holds the clip-on into place. And again, with the torque wrench, make sure you torque all these. All this is aluminum that we're working on. Don't go stripping out threads because you're He-Man or the Hulk or whatever you think you are these days. Um, use your head, get a torque wrench, torque these bolts down properly so the next guy doesn't have to kill himself getting that bolt out and you're not stripping out threads and having to jump on eBay to buy a new clip-on because you decided that you wanted to over tighten your clip-on. That one was a little bit tight so I backed it off and uh, now I'm going to put the torque wrench on it. So there we are. There we're torqued down at the front. Now we're going to torque down our triple tree. Again, I'm not going to tell you torque specifications. Those are in your manual. And now it's time to take our bike down. So this was pretty much how you replace your steering stem bearings, how you replace your forks. I hope this video helped you out. Um, I don't I'm not going any farther on this video I'm not going to show you how to uh, put the bike back together uh, you should be able to do that on your own <clears throat> you can watch my other video where I put the uh, front wheel back on and I put the new brake pads in I put the braided brake lines on but thanks for watching